Well, here we are, folks, the beautiful Southfield Reservoir. The Mecca of Angling. Is it the Theatre of Breams, Tom? Is that the what they call it? Theatre of Bream. <laughs> well, you're into one, aren't you? Uh, it's, not, it's only a skimmer, this one. In fact, it's probably the smallest fish I've, I've had. Well, it, uh, it looks good to me. Because it uh, it's been really good, to be fair. It's been awesome fishing, hasn't it? It's been incredible. I mean, I've probably got... I don't know. I mean, we've only put a couple in net, but we've put most of them back. But um, we've, we've probably had 12 to 15, up to four pounds. We've had some big fish, haven't we? Up to some big fish. Hey, up. It's not a bad one. No, it's not bad. Two pounds, isn't it? You wouldn't want it as a spot on your chin, would you, yeah, pal? It certainly wouldn't. Look at that. No, it's awesome. Not, not quite two pounds, but Ben likes it. Look. Look at that. What do you think, Ben? That's a 10, no, he's not impressed. It's not big not enough impressed. for Ben. Not impressed? It's not big enough for Ben. Look at that. Oh, awesome. Yeah, look at that. Two, we'll, two we'll, little worms. Two bits of worm, that one? Because you've had the others on maggots, haven't yeah, you? Yeah, I know. I've, I've been putting worm in. And, uh, get off. There you go, put him back. I've only put a couple in net for photos and the rest will back. So... Right, let me have a look what you're doing. Show, oh, show me your secrets, no, Tom. Come tell on. You. Come on, I've got no, the game. You do me head in. You have to excuse the camera work, folks. Look what I'm clambering on here. I'm like a mountain goat today. Look at this lot. <laughs> right. Right, let me come in, Tom. I'm coming in. I'm coming in, pal. Right, I've got I've got a solus 12 foot all round style rod from. Right, we'll talk about Nitro, these in yeah. a moment because I want to pick your brains about some of these new products okay. from Nitro. Alright, so milk bait is basically going to be two worms, two little worms like that. Are they red worms? Two red worms, which is that Mick Axon gets me. They're really nice Mick, Mick Axon. Great, they're much nicer than Andy Renton, isn't they? Um, he's nicer than Andy, yeah. I think so. He's like Mr Nice and Andy Renton. Yeah, nasty. good and bad, aren't they? Yeah, good, good cop, bad cop. Yeah, I like, it. I, I like him more than Andy. There Aye. you go. So that's one. So you put one on like that. So it's just, just into the, 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 uh, the worm itself. And then... Get another piece. I'm very particular about the worm size that I pick. Like I don't like big worms like that. That one. See that? And then they just took it through the the head like that. So, it, so the, the they're actually hanging down now from the hook. Can you see that? You get focus on it. Yeah, I can go. see that. Yeah. Right. What's so how long are they? About two inch in total. No, maybe at most. That, yeah, you know. inch and a half. And then what I'll do? I just put a pinky on the red pinky. Little topper. Uh, like a little top up. I don't. I, I don't know what keeps them on. It's just an habit, I think, more than. I just put a pinky on like that, and that's the up bait. So that's, that's worth it. a bream, isn't it? Got to oh, be worth a no, bream. That's a bream, but I can see that. Seven twelve, I'm thinking. It, yeah. Oh, maybe, maybe. And then all I'm going to do, a couple of pinkers in like that. A blob of worm. I get my feeder. What feeder have we got? Let's have a look at him. That one, 50, 50 gram, I think it is. Weight forward, and they're nice and soft. And I think it, when it hits water, quite a bit of ground bait comes out, and I think that's important on here. And then I just put the ground bait in like that. Let's have a look, let's have a look at him. And that's it. I mean, how can oh. a fish resist that? You can't, can you? If no. I were a fish. And, uh, and that's it, and that's my setup. Like a 60, me 60 centimetre hook length, 011 sublime line, 16 or a 14. And I'm just going to go for that big tower. There you go. Flop. You saw that about 50 metres? That's 50 metres, that, yeah. Nice, comfortable chuck. And uh, I'm on braid, sublime braid. It sank already. I'm just going to put it on the rest. We'll actually move behind you and we'll have a bit of tip action as well. And see if so. we get one and then put it on the rest and... Look at Ben, look at our little pal down Yeah, look at him. He's wet through it like it's been raining. Right. Can't believe the difference now. Gorgeous folks now. And then and then just set it up like that. There's not a lot of pull today, so it's quite it's quite simple. All, all I do is I like the line to be tight, which, which you can just see a bit of bend now. And, and I like the line to be tight, but the tip to be as slack as possible. I don't like a bend in it. I think if you get a bend in it, I don't see the liners and the indications which I'm looking for. Um, like that little liner then. Like that, see? see yeah, that? we saw that. See if it develops. See if we can zoom in a bit. Oh. See? We're in on it, we're in on it. But I haven't, I haven't picked it up because I, I thought that were a little liner. 
and if it, were, it would have gone again if it were a bite, especially when you've got worms on. Sometimes when you've got pinkies and maggots on, that's your bite, but it might be smaller fish. But when I'm fishing for bream, I, I make sure that it's on, especially with two worms. There we are, I think we've got the shot now. We've got it? the shot. So we've had to, there you go, again. Oh, line, yeah. oh no, it's come out of focus again. Come on, that's it. So, I want to ask you then, obviously, you've been with Naito now for... Six months? Six no, months. no, 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 five months. Yeah. Five months? Yeah. I, I was given a bit of product to test for the review the other day, and I took that out to Western Pools. It was one of the cheapest rods in the range. I think yeah. 34 quid, this rod. There you oh, go. oh, that's, that's on, on. It? And we got the bite. Look, look at the bend in the rod. Oh, no, it's not on. It's not on. It's Tom! Not. Oh, it's, I've missed it. First you one, haven't. I've missed that. First one you missed ever, that, isn't it? I can't believe that. Well, we'll get to watch you do it all did again I, now. Did you strike too early, do you think, then? No, that looked like it won to me. Yeah, I, thought, I thought so. What were saying, fans? Would you have picked up at that? I think I would have picked up yeah, at that. Yeah, well, well, I did. Yeah. Oh, I'm gutted. Them rubber hooks, isn't it? Right, let's have a look. Look at that. That's a skimmer. We didn't want that. We're too small, anyway. Baby. It was only a baby. We didn't want that one. We're not, we're not fishing for them. But, so it did me bait, so it probably was a skimmer. So, same routine. Two little worms on. Like that. You use the head because it's usually the toughest part, and uh, just take your time like that. And if 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 the worm's too big, I just I just knock head off like that and hook it that way. Let's have a look. And Come in again on this update. There you go. Put a oh, pinky on. Look at that, eh? That's great. That is. In it. I mean, that's as, about as good a bream bait as you can get, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, they're not resisting that, are they? No. Same procedure. I can't believe I missed that. But the fact that only end at worm were nipped tells me it were a smaller fish anyway. Got you, yeah. Uh, yeah. We, we don't want to be pestered with them things. Nothing under two pounds today, please. Uh, right. Watch your head. Oh, that's cocky. Oh, I reckon that's on top at last feed of that. Beautiful. That was lovely, that. You're going to catch him now, the one who just. Uh, have got your worm? We're going to have him this time. No, no, we don't want him a little. Oh, that would have, no, we'll have, have his big it, brother. It's, uh, dad. Tell you what, I'm going to get bite cam again. I'm going to get you to put this little microphone on the front of your top because we'll get better. Sound. Okay. Right, there you go. And, uh, Is that better? Right. Yeah, that's lovely. So basically, braid sank now. Uh, I'm fishing braid. It's more direct. It's a bit more violent. I've got a, a shock leader on. And uh, that little dink again then. Little dink straight away. Um, the idea of shot leader is for when you cast, because braid is really violent and really tough, so it helps it. Uh, the shot leader, which is just nylon at 0.28, sublime nylon, and the idea of that is you, you, it just takes the shock out of the, the cast. But it's important as well when you're bringing a fish in under the rod end, you don't, on, on braid, it's that violent, it goes like that and it sometimes busts you, but then you've got the effect of the nylon. And people ask me how long of shock leader do I do you want on? Well, I say twice the rod. Well, like this is a 12 foot rod, so if you had 24 foot on, when you cast out, it goes round the reel three or four times. So if you say it twice the length of the rod, that's about about perfect. And then braid, of course, don't stretch, so your bites are more violent, and and they actually go round, and they basically almost took the self, apart from the last one. And what you mustn't do is strike. If you strike, you'll bust because there's no stretch in it. So what you've got to do is think. I mean, one of the things Dennis White taught me as a kid was when you get a bite, think, that's on, then pick it up. And that was one of the things he taught me, and I've never forgot it to this day, especially with bream fishing, and that's what I do. I look at my tip, I get my bite, and I think, that's on, and pick it up. And it, it, it's still a great tip to, to this day. And it was his way of slowing me down when I was a youngster. He all I said, one of the best things he did for me was slow me down. He says because he wanted to do everything 200 mile an hour. And, uh, and and that's what he did. So that's what we did. Sit there, you get your bite, you think, that's on, and then you pick it up. And you know it's, it just gives you a split second. But what you do with braid, you do not strike. Because you've no stretch. With nylon, you can stretch and you, you, you can strike and sometimes go all the way back here, but you can't with braid. And hopefully we'll, we'll get a bite and you'll be able to see that. So when it goes, you just pick it up and it should be it should thump and be on. Right. So let me ask you about that rod then. then. Yeah. That's 
the Solus rod. It's yeah. 12 foot that one, isn't it? This is a 12 foot all round rod. Three and piece? It's three piece. Uh, I use them in 11, 12 and 13. And they're all three piece. And I like three piece rods for this style of fishing because I think you get a, a, a better action in the middle. Uh, and what you're looking for, correct me if I'm wrong Tom, but from what we said earlier is it's a nice sort of tip to mid action for bream fishing. That's where it's right. You, 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 don't, you want your power in your butt section and you want then the elasticity in the middle so that sort of catapults the, the feeder out and then you want all the action in the tip, the bite indication and the bend of the rod when you're playing the fish. So, so in the first two sections you don't have a lot of runners because the line wants to go through free because it doesn't bend a lot and they're not where all the action is you have the eyes and that bends, ra bends round the rod and that, that's the idea of this style, this style of rods and uh, the nice thing about them that they're, they're under, 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 under pound and what I like use them for is 11 foot up to 40 meters the 12 foot from 40 to 60 and then when I want to go past 60 what I put on then, I use a 13 foot because I want to generate that power. And, uh, and, and it's as simple as that to me. So when I go fishing, like if I set it like a 30 meter rod up, I'll get me 11 foot out. If I want to go past 40, I get me 12 foot rod out. And if, if it's a long chuck, I just get me 13 foot rod out. Everything else is the same, the same setup and everything like that. But the rod is about the distance that I'm, that I'm going to be fishing. What about tip size? What weight tip have you got in that? Well, in this one, it's a two ounce, and it's a two ounce because uh, I, I like one ounce tips. And in the 11 foot, I put a one ounce tip because I'm not casting it very far. But if I put a one ounce tip, in, <coughs> excuse me, in this rod, when I'm casting, it wobbles because you're putting more power in and you take distance out. So you just need a tip that's slightly stiffer, so it, so it's straight when you cast, which enables the line to come out and you go a further distance. And even further, if I'm going further, I might even use a three ounce tip so it doesn't do that in the air because that takes a lot of distance out of your, of your tip. So, so it's a, again about the rod. So in my 11 foot one, I've got a one ounce and in the 12 and the 13, I've got two ounce tips in. And it's all about that. It doesn't wobble when you cast because if, if I put a one ounce tip in this when I cast, it'll wobble in the air like that and it'll take distance away when I'm casting. Right, so for somebody who doesn't know about this sort of fishing then, You've got braid on here. Yeah. What braid are you using and why? And how do you treat it before you put it on? Right. I use Subline and it's 010 I use. You can get it in 08, 010 and 012. But I use 010. I like the middle one. If you're going to ask me why, I don't know. I just find it the best. I just like uh, uh, 010. But it's a sinking braid. And a lot of anglers who get braid, they have real tr trouble si uh, sinking the braids. And they treat them and they put all kinds of things on them. But this is a sinking braid. You can see how quick it sank when I just did that. It, when you've used it a couple of times, it sinks like mono. And it, it's really important. But there's one thing you must always do when you put it on your reel is before you start fishing, soak it. So w whether you spray it or whether you soak it, you just put some water on so it soaks. You, you can actually take the spool off and put it in a tub of water if you want. That's really important because the first cast, if you cast out when it's dry, it'll, it'll spin up and it'll crack you off. That's really important that, that you actually spray it. And even sometimes when you're not catching a lot of fish, you, you can give it a quick spray as well just to keep it, you know, but while you're fishing and winding in, it's going to get wet anyway. But once you've done that, it's, it's fine. And uh, but I like O10. It's just I'm comfortable with that. I'm comfortable with that. Some people like O12. Some people like a thinner one in O8. I just like an O10. What I'd like at the moment though, I'd like a bite. Oh, there you go. We had an indication then. You didn't moan one on, did you? I think I moaned that one on. It was a good moan. Can I meant it? Yeah, it was a little indication. Because the thing about moaning, it's I've, I've never really told anybody. You've got to do it with feeling, you know. Right, with passion, aren't you? Have got, you, you can't just go, oh, I ain't caught out, because the no, there you go, look. Oh, that's hot, is it? Well, just, there you go. Yeah, that's There you go, see, you see, I just picked up. Yeah. Just picked up, and now I just take my time. Now then. That, that is. Did you see, I just picked up, and, it, and I used the bend of the rod. And look, look at, because of braid, can you see how, how it's pumping? Yeah. So all I do now, I put the rod low like that, and I'm using the reel. Now this is uh, one of the long cast reels, the, the horizon, it's got a big spool on it and all I'm doing, I can wind it with the fish swimming towards me. I don't have to pump it and that's what I'm looking for. I don't like a, 
uh, a rod where you've got a reel that you've got to pump. It's a big size. I use this on, on my 12 and my 13 foots. And I use just an Horizon 4000 on my 11 foot because I don't need it for casting. <coughs> so if you're going into distance, look, I've not stopped winding yet and there's a bream coming in now, nice and steady. It's not a race, just take your time. I'm going to guess that this is 112. 112? Yeah. 28 myself. You think 28, right, let's see. But you can see now I'm just winding it through the rod. Now you, I can hear the knot, so I know that it's close. Like the knot from me, me what they call it is there. From a shot leader, that's the word. So when I bring it up now, it should be in front of me. There you go. There it is. Look. Oh, I tell you something. Hey. I think you and oh no, we're both that's wrong. Three pound. That's a three pounder. That look. We're both wrong. It's got to be three pound, isn't it? Yeah, that's three pound of anybody's money. So just take your time. Get your net. There you go. How, how good is that? Well, folks, hope you enjoyed. This little line. Oh, look at Ben. Go on, you like that, Ben? He likes big bream, you see. It, no, he loves a bream. He's wet through at the moment. So, there you go. Well, look, I can almost tell how big they are by me, me, thinking that's three pounds of anybody's money, isn't it? That? That's a great fishing. Yeah, look at that. So, there you go. Put him back. Swim back another day. I'll go catch him on next time, next Wednesday in, in Feeder King. There you go, my old pal. Awesome, Tom. Thank you very much for that. My That's pleasure, been, mate. It's been brilliant.